Okay, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at a brief overview of the user interface in Ableton Live. So we'll kind of be going around the perimeter of the screen and looking, kind of highlighting the most important controls that we'll be using in these courses. And uh, let's go ahead and get started, not waste any more time. So in the top left corner here, we have this button that's labeled link. We won't really be using that in either of these courses, level one or level two. But what this allows you to do if we turn that on is we can link up with other laptops or other computers on the same network and basically tempo sync the BPMs of my Ableton Live set with my friend's Ableton Live set, for example. So we can kind of jam together and keep things all synced up and in time. Again, this, this is kind of cool for live performance and um, maybe, you know, coming up with some initial ideas if you're collaborating with a partner or something like that, but we won't really be using that in these beginner level classes. Uh, to the right of that, Let's skip over here to where it says 120. This is our project tempo or beats per minute. And this is how fast or slow the tempo of the song is. You can see we're currently at 120. I can click and drag up and down to change the tempo. I can also type in a value and press enter to enter that value in. If you have an idea for a beat in your head and you're just trying to, maybe you don't know the exact tempo, but you just wanna kind of feel it out and start recording from there, you can use this tap tempo feature and every four beats that you tap in, it'll average that out and give you an approximation of your current tempo. So you can see I'm tapping out about 120-ish BPM. Let's just round that off. 120, I'm just typing it in, pressing enter. You can see it also starts the playback of the project as well, so I'm gonna stop that using the stop button here. To the right of that, we have these two nudge forward and nudge backward buttons. These are more for live performance, and Sonic Academy does have a separate tutorial series on live performance DJing in Ableton Live, where you'll cover those a little bit more in depth, but these will essentially temporarily nudge forward or temporarily nudge back or slow down the project tempo as the project is playing back. To the right of that, we have our time signature, and most electronic dance music, we're gonna be dealing with a 4-4 time signature, but you can change that simply by clicking up or down or typing in values. We also have the metronome next to this. This will tick along to the project tempo. So if we're at, let's go back to 127 BPM. And if I play my project back by using the play button, we can see this counter here is counting off the time. We're on bar four. This is counting the quarter note beats. One, two, three, four. And this is counting off 16th notes. We can change the metronome's sound or some other parameters if we click this arrow button here change the sound from the classic click to a more traditional click to a wood block. You can also set count in times for recording as well as change the rhythm if you wanted to hear eighth note triplets for example or quarter note triplets. And it's keeping it within this tempo and time signature but it's just changing the um, playback of how the metronome is ticking along to the tempo. Let's go back to auto and let's turn the metronome off by clicking on it again. I can also start and stop, by the way, the arrangement by using the space bar. Now to the right of that, uh, this is called the global quantize setting or global quantization setting, and I know that sounds pretty advanced, but this is gonna be more, I think, a little bit easier to understand if we have a couple of audio clips or MIDI clips here in our project. So let's just drag in a couple of clips from the browser. And if I play one of these clips back, I turn the metronome on, you can hear that it's ticking along in time with this very odd drum beat. And if I click this second clip, I'm gonna purposely click it and play it off time. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You can see how this next clip started perfectly on time. So this global quantization setting is basically telling us or telling Ableton Live when we play a clip back in session view, it will wait until the beginning of the next one bar until it plays it in. And it'll play it in and play it perfectly on time so it stays in sync with anything else that's playing and it'll stay in sync with our project tempo. We can change that global quantization setting from here if we want to, although my recommendation would be if you're new to live, leave it at one bar. This is a good starting point for bringing clips in and playing clips back. Okay, moving on. We mentioned the play, stop, and record buttons. I didn't mention the record button, but this round button will allow us to record in if we've got maybe a microphone we're recording in some audio or we start recording in some MIDI with a MIDI keyboard. We'll use that record button there. This is the arrangement counter. This is kind of counting along the time in the arrangement. 
So whenever we hit play, we have the playhead moving through the arrangement, even if nothing is there. And this follow button, this yellow arrow, if we were to zoom in, you can see that it follows along the position of the arrangement. If I turn that off, it'll just continue to move forward until it goes off screen. Okay, moving on from there, these are some more advanced controls that have to deal with recording into the session view and uh, automation and things like that. We'll look at these in some future lessons, so I'm gonna bypass these for now. Over here we have our loop brace controls. So if I turn this middle button on here, this is gonna activate my loop brace in my arrangement. We can turn that on or off using this button. We can also turn on what are called punch in and punch out controls here. These are gonna be helpful when we're recording. This allows you to set a specific point in the arrangement where you'll start recording and the punch out point will end the recording at that point. So right now if I were to start recording, the recording wouldn't begin until bar five and then it would end here at bar nine. Let's turn those off. And then these um, boxes to the left and right that are showing numbers, these show us the loop position, the loop brace position. So if I move it to bar one, the loop start position, you can see that that tells me it's right at the beginning of the arrangement. Bar one, beat one, 16th note number one. And this is showing me how long the loop brace is. Now I can use this number to adjust the length of the loop brace, or I can just grab the edge of the loop brace with my cursor and adjust it from there as well. Over here, we've got the draw or the pencil tool. We can click this button to toggle that on and off, or we can use the B key to toggle that as well. This will be more important when we start doing things like drawing in MIDI notes and drawing in automation. To the right of that, we have the computer MIDI keyboard icon, and this will allow us to use computer keys to play MIDI notes. This key button over here allows us to take certain parameters. You can see certain parameters now have this orange highlight to them. We can map computer keys on our computer keyboard to toggle or adjust or activate those switches. Same thing over here with the MIDI button. If we click that, we see this kind of bluish purple highlight on several of the parameters and faders and things like that in the live interface. This allows us to use a MIDI controller and map, for example, faders or knobs on my MIDI controller to faders or knobs in Ableton Live. To the right of that, we have our CPU usage. This is gonna show us how much CPU we're using. You can see here just playing a single clip in my live set is not really putting that much strain on my computer. And then to the right of that, this D button is gonna show us if we have any dropouts due to CPU overload, that button will light up. So generally you don't wanna see that lighting up. And then we've got a few buttons that are just showing us, kind of indicators showing us if we're receiving MIDI or, X, or sending MIDI out of the system. And then below that, these two buttons will toggle between Ableton Live's two main views, which are the arrangement view, these three horizontal lines, and then the session view, which are these three vertical lines. We can also toggle between the two views by pressing the tab key. And then down here, we have a series of show and hide buttons. This IO button will show and hide inputs and outputs, which we can use to configure recordings and um, tell certain channels or certain tracks to go out either the master or go pass through different tracks. This S button will show and hide what are called sends. These will send a parallel signal over here to a return track. The return tracks, which are these over here labeled A reverb and B delay. These can be shown and hidden using this R button. The M button is gonna show and hide the mixer controls, which show up on the bottom row here in the session view. They show up on the right hand side here in the arrangement. Here's the mixer controls. And then we have this D button, which will show what's called track delay. This allows us to offset or have certain elements on a track playback either later or earlier in time. We'll reset that to zero. And then finally, this X button will show and hide a crossfader on the master track. This is, again, more important if you're DJing with live. You can assign certain tracks to certain sides of the crossfader. And again, this is covered in a separate DJing with live course that we have here on Sonic Academy. On the bottom right hand corner, we have the detail view. This arrow button here will show and hide the detail view. You can also press Option Command L on a Mac, Alt Control L on a PC to show and hide that. And the detail view is um, toggleable between these two different views. We have what's called the clip view, which is going to show us in a detailed, kind of zoomed in view of what's happening on a specific clip, whether it be a MIDI clip like we have here or an audio clip. And then we also have what's called the device view. And if I click this tab, we can see any instruments or effects that are existing on that track. So we can toggle between those two views by clicking these tabs. You can also use the shift tab key command to switch between those two views. 
Also here on the bottom, but over on the left side, we have the info view. This arrow will show and hide the info view. This allows us to move the mouse over any button, any knob, any parameter in live, and it'll give us a brief description of what that is and what it does. This is invaluable if you're brand new to Ableton Live. I would say leave this open for your first few days at least using the software. I'm gonna close it for now. And then top left corner, we can open and close the browser using this arrow button. And let's spend just a minute talking about the browser. I'm gonna start here with categories. So we can see that the browser is divided into two columns. We have sort of our folders here on the left-hand side and then the individual sound samples presets show up here on the right column. If we go to categories, this is basically dividing up all of Live's core library content into specific sounds, drums only. We can select specific instruments to use, as well as audio effects and MIDI effects, and these are all things that come with Live. Then we have Max for Live. If you have any Max for Live devices installed, you'll see those show up here. If you have any third-party plugins, things like Native Instrument stuff, Massive, FM8, uh, X for Serum, things like this that are made by third-party developers, those will show up here in your plugins folder. Clips are basically little musical ideas. A lot of these are loops. Some are audio, some are MIDI. And if you're not sure what's what, a good place to start is to click on it. You can hear it in the browser by clicking this little headphone preview button. And if we drag and drop it over here where it says drop files and devices here, it'll create the appropriate track for us, whether it's a MIDI or an audio track and we can click play on it to play it back. Turning into the weirdest song ever. <laughs> um, so moving on from clips, we have samples, and these are all just audio samples, so recorded audio. And for starters, this is gonna be just the stuff that comes with Live's core library. So you can see some of these are just like one shot synth notes. Some of these are gonna be loops and drum beats and things like that too, but these are all essentially just recorded audio samples. Then down here in places, we have packs, and if you're brand new to live, you'll probably only see the core library pack, which is fine. This is all the stuff that comes stock with Ableton Live. This is basically all the same stuff that we have up here in the categories, but it's just sort of divided in a different, different set of subfolders, essentially. But it's all the same content that we'll find over here in categories. When you start installing more packs from Ableton.com, you'll see those show up here in this packs folder as well. You can see I have quite a few. Um, if I click here where it says user library, this might be just a bunch of empty folders for you right now, but when you start saving your own presets for live devices, when you start importing your own samples, things like that, these folders will start populating. So it's kind of like your own custom library that you build up over time. Below that, you'll have a folder for current project. If I were to save this project, it's untitled right now, it hasn't been saved, but as soon as you save a project, it'll basically show you the current projects folder with the version of the project you're working on, as well as any samples that you've recorded or imported into the project. And then below current project, these are all totally customizable folders that you can add and take away from this places section at will. To add a folder to this, you simply click here where it says add folder. And let's say for example, I wanna add a specific folder of samples that I always wanna have access to, maybe my music radar crate digger samples, that sounds cool. So if I click on it and I press open, that folder will now show up here in the places and I can quickly access anything from that folder right from my Ableton Live browser. If you wanna remove a folder from here, you can simply right click on it and just, press, uh, just click here where it says remove from sidebar. And then finally, let's jump up here to the collections section. If we click this edit button, we can show and hide our different collections folders. And what the collections folders are are essentially just customizable folders. They're just colored tags really and um, they'll tag things into these different colored folders. And you can customize these however you want. And the cool thing about this is you can take any individual audio sample or loop, any instrument, any preset, and tag it into these different folders. Now let's jump down here to the purple and the gray ones because I haven't used these yet. So let's say for example, I wanna change the purple one. Let's rename it by clicking on it and pressing Command R. I'll name it Kick Samples. And what I can do is I can start searching for kick samples. So let's go down here to where it says samples. And if we go up here to the search field, I can press Command F or Control F on a PC or just click there and we'll search kick. And now any audio sample that has the word kick in it shows up in the browser. And if I like certain kicks, I can simply tag them into that folder by control clicking or right clicking on them and selecting kick samples from here. 
or the other option is simply to use the number key. So I can use the number six key to tag into that purple kick samples folder or the number seven key to tag it into the gray folder, etc. So let's just use the number six and let's just tag a few of these. Nice one. So it's that easy. And then if I click kick samples, let's turn the preview off for a sec. You can see all the kick samples that I just tagged into that folder. And again, it doesn't have to be just samples. This can be instrument presets. This can be whole devices or instrument racks or device chains can be tagged into these different folders. So this is really, really helpful for getting yourself organized and quickly finding the things that you find yourself using over and over again. So anyway, that is our brief overview of the interface. In our next video, we will go a little bit deeper into this view here, which is Live's session view. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.